right, so today I have my children's message. You ready for this one? Listen. Children, you yeah. ready? Yeah. Tori, you pay attention. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Well, I brought with me a box of gingerbread cookie mix that also makes an amazing cake. Okay, but gingerbread cookie mix. I like my gingerbread cookie mix because I like to make two things. One, you don't like gingerbread? I love it. Oh, man, you don't <laughs> like it in the back. All right. Well, I like it because I like to make two things. I make my walking dead bread. I got zombie cutout cookie things. So I can make little zombies to walk around. And then I have another one. And this is what I really like. It's ready for this? You ready? <laughs> yeah, ninja bread, man. Ninja bread, man. Not gingerbread, man. I make ginger ninja bread, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but here's the important thing. The reason I brought this is because I was reading in the book of James. James says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. So James is saying, don't just listen to God's word. Do what it says. Because let's, let's put it this way. On the back here, it tells me I'll need one egg and half a cup of butter or margarine, softened and melted, and it has all the directions here. So if I just listen to these directions and I don't do what it says, I'm just gonna have a box of crusties. I wonder if crusties, will you please send us money? Um, I'll just have a box of crusties um, gingerbread mix. But if I do what the directions say, I can make some really good cookies. I can make my ninja bread. Okay, or what if I, I just read the instructions and I just listened to them and I didn't do what it said and it said, hey, you know what? Instead of an egg, I'm going to use the malted eggs from the from the <laughs> Easter basket. I got. I'm going to use malted eggs instead. And then and then let's see, half a stick of butter or half a cup of butter. I'm going to use orange juice. I like orange juice, so I'm going to use orange juice instead of butter. How do you think it's going to come out? Pretty nasty. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just not going to work if I don't follow the directions. So that's what that's what James is telling us. Don't just listen to God's word, but do what it says. If we just listen to God's word, we don't do what God's word says. Uh, how are things going to turn out? Because it just might not work out as good for us. But if we love God with all our heart, we'll help others. Uh, if we love God with all our heart, we'll be nice and friendly to others. And when we do good things, we are loving God with all our heart. And when we do things that make people sad or angry, we are not loving God with our whole heart. If In that case, we'd just be listening and not doing, and things are not going to turn out as good. But if we need to listen to God's word, and then we need to also follow through and do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So. You guys are down. Yes. We are going to leave that light out. This one here arced a minute ago back here, and then it cool. started going on and off. Well, let me shut it off either. Okay. So that's why they're out. That's why. In Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 3, uh, we're going to read who Jesus was talking about, uh, who Jesus was talking to. And then from verses 11 through 32, we're going to read the story about the prodigal son. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided up his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. 
when he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him out in the fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have enough have bread enough to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw he was and saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran out and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said, um, but the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, one, the best one, and put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now is found, and they, and they began to celebrate. Now the elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called the slaves and asked them what was going on. And he replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has uh, got him back safe and sound. Then the older brother became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But, the father, but he answered his father, listen, for all the, these years, I have been working like a slave for you. I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when his son, but when this, but, oh, listen, listen to this, it's not my brother anymore. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with um, prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him? Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, and he has now been found. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our fortress. Amen. Amen. The story of the prodigal son. I really love this story. It's an awesome story. But every time I look at it, I always think about the younger son. I've never really focused on the older son before. And today, I want to just focus on the older son, because Jesus is telling this story in response to how the Pharisees were complaining that Jesus was eating with sinners and tax collectors. Just a quick word about tax collectors at the time of Jesus. They were unpatriotic people. See, when we pay our taxes, it's hard to go pay that property tax bill sometimes. It's, it's, you know, gets to be kind of expensive. But as we pay it, we think, well, this money might, you know, this money should go for, you know, picking up our trash, taking care of roads, uh, taking care of, of things in our town that need to be taken care of. So it makes it a little easier to pay. But imagine if you went to the tax collector, gave them your property taxes so they could take it and send it to Russia. You wouldn't like that very much. At the time of Jesus, the tax collectors were taking the taxes and sending the taxes to Rome. They weren't viewed very favorably. Now, sinners, this is interesting at the time of Jesus as well. Uh, we, we should really view sinners as Christians as we've all fallen short of the glory of God. 
but um, we, we've all sinned and fallen short. But remember that we are all justified by the grace of Jesus. So as Christians, we should believe that we are all sinners. But at the time of Jesus, sinners to the Pharisees sometimes were just people who were too poor to be able to afford the sacrifices, the atonements, the tithes, the, the things that they had to do. It was too expensive for them. And because they couldn't do it, they were viewed as sinners. Imagine being viewed as a sinner because you were too for, poor to afford the proper sacrifice. Imagine being a sinner because you were too poor to travel to Jerusalem during the poor time of Passover. These are people that were viewed as sinners just because they were poor. Not because they didn't love God or follow God. They were just sinners because they couldn't keep up with the rituals that the richer people could do. So, <coughs> to me, when I read this story, Jesus is using um, the tax collectors and the sinners. He's using them as the younger son in the story. Uh, we'll call him the bad son. I like to call him the bad son. And then the, the older, the good son, would be the Pharisees. Obviously, the father is Jesus or, or God. So the Pharisees seem to always be looking, out, looking down on others. They always seem to be looking down on Jesus. And uh, so, you know, sometimes I want to say, boy, I'm glad I'm not like them. But if I did that, I think I would be just like them. Uh, Jesus told this story in Luke. To some who trusted in their own righteousness and viewed others with contempt, he told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other men. I'm not like swindlers or evildoers or adulterous people or even like the tax collector that's back here in this place. I fast twice a week. I pay my tithes of all that I acquire. But the tax collector stood at a distance, unwilling to even lift up his eyes to heaven, and instead he beat his breast, and he said, God, have mercy on me. A sinner. I tell you, Jesus said, this man, rather than a Pharisee, went home justified. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. So if I were to say I'm glad I'm not like these other people, then I would be exactly like that Pharisee. I guess I'm going, I'm going down the wrong road if I say I'm glad I'm not like them. So I won't do that. So now, what if we call the younger son the bad son? After all, he wasted his father's estate. And the older son, the good son, he stayed home and he worked like a slave. Now imagine for a minute in that story that you are the older son. You, uh, there you are working away on your father's farm while your brother goes away, wastes all your father's money, he squanders it, and then he returns home, and your father forgives him. <coughs> Not only uh, does your father forgive him, but your father throws a feast for him. The older brother said to the father, here I am working like a slave, and you've never done anything for me. I think the older son forgot a few things. For one, I think the older son forgot all that his father was doing for him. You know, when I was a teenager, I could look at my parents as a teenager, and I could pick out every one of their flaws. And I could tell them about every flaw that they had. And I knew that I was going to be so much better than them because I could see all their flaws. And then one day, I had my son. I, I moved out. I got married. I had a son. And my son stayed up all night that first night, home from the hospital. And then I realized how much my parents did do for me. I called my mom the next day. I remember this. And I said, Mom, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything I've ever done. She goes, what are you talking about? I said, no, every time I've ever done anything wrong, I am so sorry because now I realize all that you did for me. This is what the older son forgot. 
He forgot all that his father was doing for him, and he's only looking at what his father is doing for his younger brother right now. The older brother said to the father, I'm working like a slave. You've never done anything for me. Now the, the, the good older son is forgetting all that his father is doing for him. And the Pharisees, they were forgetting all that God was doing for them. They were only focused on the repentant people with Jesus. And Jesus was glad that they were repentant. It wasn't that they weren't, they didn't have to follow all the rituals, but they needed to change their hearts and they were doing that. That's why they were with Jesus. That's why Jesus was excited. And now the Pharisees are getting frustrated because we've done all these great things. Where's ours? What's in this for me? So today I want to remind all of us, I'm even here to remind myself, the older good son forgot all that his father was doing for him. He forgot that he was still an heir to his father's estate, that all his father had left was going to be his. He forgot that he was not only part of his father's estate or an heir to his father's estate, he forgot that he was part of his family business. We need to remember we are part of God's family. In the book of Romans, we read these words. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you might live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, meaning Daddy, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are God's children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. Do you see what I'm saying? We are beloved sons and daughters of God. The older son in this story forgot he was an heir to his father's estate. He was jealous of what his father was doing for his repentant brother. And the Pharisees were upset with Jesus, with the repentant people. And sometimes, doing God's work is exhausting. I don't mean as a pastor. I just mean as a Christian, doing God's work can be exhausting. You know, try teaching, try, try teaching a youth group and go in there with a room full of teenagers and try to teach them about God. It can feel exhausting. Try to always be forgiving. If you try to always be forgiving, it can be exhausting. And try to be generous in a world that just wants to take from you. It is exhausting. And all this work can make us feel like the good son. We may feel like slaves to God. But I am here to remind all of us we are beloved sons and daughters of the one true living God. And since we are sons and daughters through, the, through our faith in Jesus, we are heirs to the fortune, the fortunes God has in store for us. So the next time you're exhausted during God's will, do not be like the good son. Remember you are loved and you will be rewarded for what you have done. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us. Forgive us, Father, when we forget all that you are doing for us in our lives. Father, be with us, lead us, guide us, heal us, and help us to remember we are your sons and daughters, adopted through our faith in Jesus. Father, we offer this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen.